Welcome back. This is going to be a video on aligning your race car. We've already scaled the car. If you haven't watched that video, uh, go click on that video. It, I think it'll be helpful for a lot of you. I've got Abby here helping me. Um, she's, she's my assistant in the garage and at the track most of the time. So she she's, does a lot of uh, YouTube watching. So she's gonna help us with some YouTube making. Uh, what, what I've got set up here, I don't know how well it's showing up on the camera. I have a fixture I made a few years ago. It's, what I've got here is I've got a, a center mark, which is, coincides with the center mark in the chassis. I've got this welded fixture uh, clamped on. I've also got a hole where I can line this bar up to. The grooves in this bar, a similar apparatus at the back, and I've got a string with fishing weights on it. I then put them in the groove, and this is how I can measure my toe. Let's see, so priorities as far as alignment goes. Generally speaking, start at the back and work your way to the front. Set caster first, then camber, then toe. On, on this car with the caster, I tend to use uh, the upright to go off of, and I just make sure both sides are even. I use an angle meter and make sure that it's at zero. That would adjust your bump steer on this car, and again, we're not going to get into that rabbit hole as far as that goes. The front of the car, uh, caster, it's important that it's the same side to side. The number for isn't as important as it is that it's equal side to side. For those of you that don't know, a uh, positive caster, uh, think like a chopper motorcycle, that would have a lot of positive caster where the, the fork is closer to the rear, the top of the fork is closer to the rear axle, the wheel is further away. Negative caster would be like a shopping cart. The front wheels there. I don't have a uh, toe plates on on this setup here. I also don't have a caster gauge, so there are some ways that we can get around that. Again, not as accurate, but it's so long as you're being consistent in the way that you measure your car, that's what's important. Re record things and be consistent in the way you measure it. I will many times use a camber gauge uh, and set it in this direction. So line up the lower ball joint and the upper ball joint with a straight edge, perfect Abby, with a straight edge there. And she, let's just say that she's lined that up and holding that. I'll then take my camber gauge and put it against here and I'll take the reading from there. Uh, an, an alternative to do, and can you hold the camera gauge for me? We'll, get, we'll use that in one moment. Uh, use either a plumb bob or level like this. Level, get a, get a stop against the upper ball joint. Level it, and then get a measurement to the center of your lower ball joint and the center of your upper ball joint. Do the same thing on the other side. A uh, little bit of trig, and bam, you've got your caster set up. So, again, records, records, records are what's very important, particularly as that and what you're doing. Uh, we'll move on, and I'll, I'll kind of show you how, how I'm measuring the camera. Uh, we'll go from there. This car, we, we're, what's on it right now are the Hoosier Vintage Formula Ford treaded tires. Great tire really have been pleased with them. Thumbs up to Hoosier for stepping up uh, and supplying a tire when uh, we, we really didn't have a lot of alternatives out there. But it, it's great. It's, it's right in line with the Dunlops and the Avons, uh, readily available. And so it doesn't like as much camber put in as does as do the Dunlops and the, and the Avon. And what Abby's got going here, 
she's she's lining up where we're reading our marks on the wheel. I know you probably can't see that from your angle, but she wants to make sure that that there's no tilt of this so that it's vertical, it's through the axle center line, and that she's going off a known good surface. If your wheels are bent, this you'll need to find an alternative method, maybe go off the hub, that sort of stuff. But we have a known value here, and we I've been doing it this way, so I keep doing it this way. All right, let's see what that reads right there. And we're reading uh, negative a tenth of a degree there, which is what, what I want. I, I, in the back, tend to dial in about zero degrees to uh, negative a tenth of a degree per side in the back. On the, on the Dunlops, I tend to go a quarter to a third of a degree negative per side. Uh, but that's where I start with. The front, I would do the same thing. I, on the Hoosiers, I, I look for about a half a degree negative per side in the front. So in camber, this would be positive, this would be negative. So we're, we're setting it negative. This one we've, we've got set to negative six tenths of a degree. So now we're going to measure our toe. What we're going to use here is a steel ruler. It's got some indications for, uh, let's see which scale it is, 30 seconds of an inch and 64 of an inch. It's got, it's got some of the numbers marked too, so you don't have to do nearly as much math. We've got our string, and we're going to go ahead, in a similar way to what we measured the camber, we will measure, Abby's going to demonstrate, she's going to, she's going to measure at the front edge of the wheel here, and come this direction, so we that, see that? So she's measuring at the front edge of the wheel there, and what we do is we would, we would mentally note or write that measurement down, and then she's going to come over here and measure to the back edge of the wheel, and what the measurement she's looking at is where the string intersects this this ruler here. So, our back setting, whatever you do, do not set toe out in the back of this race. Do not, do not, do not set toe out. You, you, it'll be exciting if you do. We are looking for a total of one, somewhere in the range of one to three thirty seconds. Total toe in at the back too much and you end up robbing yourself horsepower that you've paid to uh, gain. And so what I, what I like to shoot for is about a 64th of an inch longer measurement on the front measurement than on the back measurement on each wheel. So that would, a 64th plus a 64th, a 32nd of an inch total toe in in the back. The front I mean, you may be able to show them a little bit better on the front wheels here. So what we do is we make sure our steering wheel is level. Some cars have a, have a cool little thing where uh, they'll either have some, some sort of a, a clamp you can put on there or they'll have a hole in the, in the rack and you can drop a drill bit, lock the steering wheel. Pretty cool setup. I tend to be a little bit more uh, backwoods about it and just center the wheel by eye. When I make an adjustment, I gotta come back and recenter the wheel, roll the car, whatever floats your boat. So, Abby's measuring at the front of the wheel here, and she's gonna, and she's then gonna measure at the back of the wheel. She wants this measurement to be about a 32nd of an inch shorter than the measurement she gets at the back of the wheel. That's gonna give us Two thirty seconds or sixteenth of an inch total toe out in the front. So the measurement at the front of the wheels is longer than the measurement at the back of the wheels. And that gives us some stability under braking, gives you a nice crisp point in on turning as far as that goes. Now, we've said this a little bit in the in the cross weights video on, on the scaling video. Record, record, record. Record your values with the driver in the car, 
and without the driver in the car. I've got the driver out of the car because that's what everything is uh, set to and measured to on this one. Abby, can you show them our records book for, for our two cars? This is, this is just what you want to get in the habit of doing. Show them how thick that is. That has our setup data and everything else. So we, we go back and we go off of that. It gives us something to go to and we debrief and that way when, uh, when things don't work out, we know what changes didn't work out. And when they do, we, we know what to happen. That way when things get wonky down the road, we know what to go to. Um, a note while you've got all your equipment set up here is make marks. Can you show them the marks there again? Up by the camera. Make marks on your adjusters once you've got everything locked in. Yep, there you go. And twist it for them, Abby. You'll notice they're two colors. All right. I've got a black and a purple on there, if you can see it. I've got, I make my marks, and so I develop a plan of what I think I might do with the track. So if I think that I might want to dial a quarter of a degree more camber in and, and see what, what happens with that, we'd go ahead and we would dial a quarter of a degree more camber in, back to front, and, and we would then re, reset the toe and all that sort of stuff. We'd then make a different color mark where our adjusters are at that point. And what that allows us to do, obviously record the information. What that allows us to do is when we're at the racetrack and maybe tight on time, we don't have to carry this with us, it, although it's nice, but we definitely don't need to break it out. We can now, because of our, our books and our volume, we can move our adjusters to, to line up the other marks. It'd be something you would write down the procedure to do in your book. Bam, if you can, if you can line up two marks or paint by numbers, you can then set your car up in the woods, in the grass, in the mud, wherever. You've done it uh, in lab conditions. So, with that being said, I uh, hope, hope you found this helpful. Uh, if, you've got, if you've got some other techniques, I know, I know there are a lot of other techniques out there, certainly people that know more about it than I do, please uh, let us know those techniques. We're not looking for any secrets, but it, it, different cars, different setups, different garages, things may be helpful to other people. We really would appreciate your input. The point of this channel is to really get the community talking and, and helping each other and, and get things out there. Um, Abby, is there anything you'd like to tell our viewers? Um, please give this video a like or a thumbs up. Uh, a subscribe to this channel and I have a question for you guys. How many videos have y'all subscribed to? Oh, good question, good question. Hopefully all of ours. Thank you very much, and stay tuned for more of these videos. We got, we got some parts coming down the road on some, some setup features as far as what you want to adjust based on what your car is doing. If you haven't gone back and looked at the scaling video, do it. If you're scared to do this stuff yourself, seek professional help. It will pay dividends. Your track experience will be much better. Thank you.